Hello survivors and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be talking about the roadmaps for Maggie and John in terms of getting their weapons. As you can see I have completed it. I completed it on both my regions. I did it on my melee region first because I knew there was an issue with the labelling on the stages because I knew I could complete it on my melee region regardless because I could just take a really tanky team. I have revives and I could just power through it. I lost a character on pretty much every stage by the end of it. But even though the majority of the stages are against humans and they're mislabeled, because if you go onto a stage, like we go onto the last one and we click replay and team select up the top right hand corner in challenges, you can see it says large mob, it also says dividers, and it also says choke points. When you see these three, you generally would think this is a walker stage, and it says that on every single stage. However, the stages are actually the first stage is humans. Uh, sorry, the first stage is walkers, and then every stage after that is humans. But it labels them all as walkers. Stage 2 was actually pretty straightforward. It had some pretty easy humans on the first two waves. The last wave did increase in power. I think they had 4.5k health and 4.5k and damage and around about 2,000 um, defense. So they were pretty tanky. But then after that, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5, every single wave was like that. They did start getting stronger and stronger and stronger until the very last wave of stage five, that's where I lost my character in terms of I didn't revive them in time, um, was I think the leader was a Timothy who had 11 and a half K damage, huge amounts of damage. And basically when you go on these stages, the thing you should do is focus the damage dealer. Find who's got the damage dealing rush. Don't worry too much about the healers. There's no revives on these teams, so you don't have to worry too much about revives. Just look who can do the most damage and take them out as quickly as possible. They're your biggest threat. You want to be building your team quite solidly to last, you know, to survive. You know, characters are probably going to die. You're going to need to take smelling salts. You're going to need to have a revive character almost 100%. Make sure your revive character is very tanky. I took a team that was extremely tanky. I also had a buffer, someone who's very, very important. Take a buffer. If you're taking an Eric lead like I did, take SR Zeke who will get the bonus from Eric and he will give 60% attack and 60% defense, which will help a lot. Hills will go around as well. He did die a few times because he's a five star, um, but you want to mod him out just defensively or HP and just hope for the best. Basically, you hope for that the revives are going to pick him back up. You do need one, probably two good damage dealers as well, so you can just at least take a character out in a turn or two. And it's going to be slow, but you don't worry. There's no time limit. You just want to be slowly taking characters down. You want to be using your items maybe on the first wave as well, just to weaken everyone. Make sure you get your rushes up. You don't want to be getting one shot on the first on the first wave. And just take your time and slowly go through it. It's all about building your team properly. All about taking good weapons. Um, and and it can be it'll be very difficult if you haven't got six stars. It'll be very difficult for you. You're going to have to take someone who does huge amounts of buffs, like maybe. The Green Heath, who does 85% um, defense and 85% attack. You'll be wanting to take a lot of revives as well. You want, probably will want to take a defensive leader just so you're not getting absolutely wrecked. Um, if you take too many damage dealers and just a healer, like you could potentially take like all six star team with Andrew Lee, Tyrese, um, Dwight, you know, and just take a Kenny as a healer and a Sadiq, you're going to get destroyed. You're going to get absolutely destroyed. So make sure you take a good team. If you take reds, it could be good because a stun on defense, that could work quite well. But just remember, as seen on the screen, this is what the stages are. The first stage is walkers, and then every stage after that is humans. And this is how it worked for Maggie's roadmap. It might be different for John's. John's might not be mislabeled, but it should be probably the same, I would assume. Um, but if it's not... You just want to be aware of, you know, I took in some human killing teams with crit weapons. So it did still take a long time when it was humans, but at least I had the right rushes. And then if it was walkers, I'd at least crit them down. And that's basically how I did it on my other region. And then once I learned what the stages were on the on my other region, on, on my ranged region, I just took in human killing teams with human killing weapons as well. Um, so hopefully this has helped you out a little bit. It is a bit mislabeled. If you do fail, do not worry. You can maybe save up your coins to buy back in if you're really struggling. But if you think that you could probably do it with just some more test tubes, we should be getting some more test tubes next week in the level ups. I have seen some like conspiracy theories where we're not going to get any more test tubes. I haven't seen this officially released anywhere. And with over five days left in the event, and there being a couple of level ups in between now and the end of the event, I would assume at least one of them is going to have more test tubes in them. The rewards are great. It's really nice to get weapons. We rarely ever get weapon rewards. I do love getting weapon rewards. Uh, the characters are nice. They're not amazing, but they're nice. And it is a nice idea, the way they've done the roadmaps, in my opinion. But 
I don't think that they've, you know, obviously it's not very well polished because the stages were, were mislabeled. It is very difficult, but I'm not completely against that. But at the same time, every, it's all or nothing with this. If you don't complete this last act, you're not getting the character and you're not getting the weapon. Maybe the character could be given um, the stage before or the act before and then weapons like a bonus act in the future. Just so you split up the rewards a bit and make it, a, you know, so that some people do achieve some things and maybe they don't achieve the other. Maybe make other parts more difficult. You know, you could make weapons as this as a regular thing and just make that as an extra part of the roadmap or something. I don't know. I do like the fact that if you wanted to purchase or try and purchase the other BQ, you could go for the other character as well. Obviously, you'd need to buy more test tubes. So there is there is a pay paying factor in this if you really want to do more. But there is definitely a free to play factor as well because I haven't paid anything. I've managed to get Maggie and I managed to get a, a nice weapon at the same time, a trait crit special, which is nice, which is just a nice bonus. Um, but that's in this video, guys. Do tell me what you think about the event as a whole, as I said. Um, and as always, guys, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.